Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out a free add-on for the Godot game engine called Cyclops, which is for quickly building levels. It's a level prototyping tool, um, and the easiest way to explain it is to just jump in and show you how to use it. So first thing you're going to want to do is head on over here and do the download. I will obviously have the links to this repository in the linked article down below, but go ahead and download the source code. I'm also using uh, the texture pack here, and a handful of the textures for this example. If you want to go ahead and check that out, it's hosted up on itch.io as well, and then you're going to want to fire them off into Godot. Dough. So I've already set up a project for it. So here is my demo project. Not much going on here. I uh, will just open this up. I just pre-configured an environment, put a camera in it, and so on. So here is our initial Godot project. We'll fire that one up. Yeah, that's it. That's what we were starting with here. Uh, we don't actually need that uh, mesh instance there. So what we're going to do now is import in our Cyclops add-on. In order to do this, you go here, find your location of your project. So right-click here open in file manager and simply going to want to drag and drop it from your downloads folder into here. So I've already extracted it in my downloads folder. So let's open up downloads available right here. So you can notice in downloads here, I've extracted the archive out here. And then you just want to go ahead and grab the add-ons folder from that guy right there and copy it into your project like this. It'll copy it over and then over here, there'll be a quick blip as it imports. Your add-ons is now available. Then what you want to do is go to project project settings, head on over to plugins, and you will find it right there. So I'm running the Steam version, don't ask me why, and that is something that just pops up. So just go ahead and ignore that, it'll go away. All right, so there we go. Cyclops is up and ready to go. So what is next? Well, let's go about actually using it. In order to use this guy, what you do is go here, create a new node in the scene, Head on over to the search, go into search, search for the word Cyclops. It is Cyclops blocks that you are interested in, and that is your base building block. Now, you're going to notice nothing popped up on screen, but all of the tooling is available here at the top. So what you'll notice here is we've got uh, block, we've got prism, clip, so on. I'll show you some of those things in action later on, but what you are interested in is block. So it is already selected. This is a painting mode. So what we do is basically pick a location and then drag out in another direction, drag out in another direction. So we're just doing a floor at this point in time. I'm going to let go of my mouse and then I'm going to click up. And there you see we now have a uh, basic floor going on here. And you'll notice it created a blocks underneath. And you just sort of keep repeating this process until you've blocked in the entire level you are interested in. So let's go ahead. We can create another block here. So let's grab uh, a corner here, so let's cl click there, over here, drag across this way, and then let go, and then we can drag it up. So if you wanted to do your four walls, you could do so this way. So again, I could now go here, click there, dr drag over, drag across, like so, and now up, like so and we've done our bounding wall. And you basically just keep working it that way over and over and over again until you have the level that you wish. It's kind of, it's a simpler version of like CSG. So CSG, you're kind of building out of Boolean shapes. Here, you're just building out of a number of different blocks. Now there's some cool things you can do here. For example, uh, I've now got it selected. I could grab an individual face. So let's go here into face mode like so. And you're gonna see little, Little nubs should show up. I don't know where my nubs are. All right, so maybe I need to select my block first. Select my block, like so. Go into face mode, like so. And then you're gonna see you get little manipulators you can use, and then you can modify, and everything is snapping accordingly. So you could quickly make um, you know, ramps using a mechanism like this, or I can grab this face and we'll just make things really bad. Let's undo that one right there. So you get an idea. So you can work on a face by face level. At the same time, uh, you can actually work with those faces for doing texture. So I can grab the whole block. So let's go back to block mode. We'll grab this block over here and let's go ahead and use a texture that I set up for it. So you see here, we've got the textures. Over here, you see the materials that are available. What I'm going to do is take all of the various different materials I've set up and just drag them over here into the materials palette like so and uh, tech wall. Okay, so right there. So let's make this a tech wall. So with this selected now, I just basically uh, double click and then boom, that is defined. So now if I want to come over here, I can set this guy up as say I wanted to be on my floor, just boom, and it does the whole thing. Or at the same time, I could pick an individual face. So let's come down here, pick a face. Let's go. So sorry, one sec. Block mode, click this block, go over here, pick this face, grab this face right here, and I could quickly make just that face brick. There, see. 
So you can use this guy to just basically rapidly prototype levels, white boxing, and so on. Now, the cool thing here is this is actually set up uh, with physics all ready to go. So we got this, this weird environment that we've already created. But if I came in here and I created some physical objects, so let's go in here and create a new, uh, so I guess I would need a rigid body to start with. Uh, and that rigid body would need a collision shape. 3D, all right, so let's create a sphere, like so, all right, sphere shape, yeah, zero point, okay, so let's make this one meter across, like so, and now let's actually give it something to render, so mesh, uh, instance 3D, create a new uh, spherical mesh, like so, and edit that guy. All right, so this guy is, what did I say? I said one meter before, so half a meter and one meter height. Okay, that should actually match. They should be basically the same size. So now we have this physics object in our world. Let's just go ahead and grab this control handle, bring it over our world like so, like that. Yeah, we're good to go. And hopefully this is in view of my camera. So let's just go check that out. So camera here. See what it sees. Yeah, it'll see it. All right, so let's go ahead and see what happens. And we have physics for our prototype level. And boom, it just hit. I, okay, I don't know why it didn't roll. <laughs> but uh, it does have the rigid body set up. So it stops immediately on the collision there. Um, there's a few other things to be aware of with this guy. So for example, if you want to move something, you go back here. So select your Cyclops block like so. Uh, and then you pick uh, the individual block that you wish to manipulate. So go into block mode, grab the block that you're interested in like so, and then you can move it around by dragging and dropping like so. There will be auto snapping to other surfaces. If you want to go up and down, hold down alt and it will go up and down when you move. So this is a way of quickly moving and snapping things. Everything is uh, snap based. Uh, you do have control over exactly how that works. You've also got some quick tools over here under edit so we can rotate things around really quickly for uh, our level. Uh, we also have control over, you know, textured versus wireframe. If you want over here, control over the UVs. You also have control over, we saw earlier on, the individual faces. Uh, another thing that you can do is clip. And I believe this is how you would go ahead about creating holes in your world. But let's go ahead and show you clipping in action here. So do clip and basically just click in the world and you're clicking two locations like so. And then you hit enter and it will do a planner cut. So that will clip out. So now what you'll notice here is if I come back here to face, this is now a face and that is now a face. So again, if you wanted to change things up, I could now make that brick. So you could actually, you know, start cutting a uh, whole like windows and door textures, etc., out of your spaces pretty quickly as well uh, using that clipping to cut existing faces out. Uh, we also, again, do have edge control here. So you see here, then I come in and I can manipulate the edge that way and so on. So you can use this to really rapidly, it's called white boxing for prototyping of a level that is game ready and ready to go. It's a neat project. Uh, it's not going to be used to create, you know, finished work or anything. What it is about is a quick workflow for getting uh, polygonal models or base models and meshes to work with. So if you're starting to prototype or you're creating a very simple style of game, could be a good pick for you. Again, the cool thing here is it does have that um, uh, auto texturing functionality here. So uh, it was just released last week. So it is early on. I'm, I'm expecting to see some improvements as we go. One of the nice things that you'll find with it uh, is it is documented. So if you want to figure out how to actually do things, uh, they will walk you through the various different processes of working with it. Uh, so it uses convex blocks to build scenes. means that no block in your scene can have uh, indentations or inside corners. You can create scenes that have holes, arches, and other concave uh, in architecture, but you'll need to build them out of convex pieces. This is kind of like the old school way that you used to make levels in like uh, Quake and Doom and such using the old school tool. Uh, Quake, I guess, not Doom. Uh, so the advantage of, of this is that it keeps things clean and the convex collision detection is very fast. It's also expressive. I might change to use a general mesh uh, in a future update to this project. So it uses a grid and most operations will automatically snap vertices to the grid. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting thing. The nice thing here is it does actually have undo tools in. Everything here is documented in terms of what it does. So if you want to go ahead and check that one out, it is available on GitHub, uh, Cyclops Level Builder. I will have the relevant links down below. If you want to check out the textures that I used here, they are from the Retro Texture Pack over on itch.io. Uh, you can check them out as well. Uh, you're not going to be creating the next, uh, you know, Last of Us using this 
technology. But if you're looking to uh, quickly prototype levels or you're trying to get that retro, um, you know, quake level kind of setup, that is what this tooling is all about. And it works quite quickly. Again, there's some usability issues that I've kind of bumped into and I've had some, uh, some error messages while running it. Uh, but that, you know, it's an early release and I expect we'll see improvements as time goes on. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the Cyclops level builder for the Godot game engine. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.